Welcome to James Robotics. Last time we upgraded our Shapoko 3 with a new control board, the Duet 3. Check out the video in the description below. Today we're going to show you how we installed an automated tool changer onto our Shapoko 3 and we are releasing everything for free on GitHub. Let's begin by breaking down what is an automated tool changer. An automated tool changer or ATC is a system used by a CNC machine to quickly change the cutting tool. ATC helps reduce non-production time, allowing the machine to spend more time cutting and in turn improve the machine efficiency. No more waiting for an operator to manually change and probe tools. The ATC is one more step towards a complete automated manufacturing. So now that we know what is the ATC, let's talk about the hardware needed to make one work. First would be the Duet powered Shapoko 3. Second would be the new spindle, one that can vary its speed. To do this, we will also need a variable frequency drive. Third would be the tool changer mounted at the end of the spindle. But we are not done yet. The automated tool changer uses air pressure to pick up and drop off tools. Using it would require a complete pneumatic system, including compressor, tank, pneumatic regulators, actuators, and tubing. Lastly, we would need to update the software, the G-code, and the post-processor to support the new hardware. Sounds easy. Let's begin. Many months later. This is our Shepoko CNC. We are using Carbide 3D Shepoko 3XXL with the T-Track and Clamp Kit. The standard Shepoko comes with either a Makita or a DeWalt router. We have replaced ours with a 1.5 kilowatt, 2 Hz power, air-cooled spindle. The new spindle gives the Duet 3 the ability to control the speed of the cutting bit, but it will also have a significant noise reduction. The spindle is powered and controlled by a variable frequency drive. This takes the signals from the CNC controller and sets the spindle speed and also sends back data to the CNC. Attached to the end of the spindle is a new automatic tool changer. This allows the machine to pick up and drop off tools without the need of a human operator. Our current setup allows us to support up to six different tools, but if we desired, we can add more. The ATC is powered by air pressure, so in order to use it, we have to install a pneumatic system. We've done this by adding a pneumatic compressor and an air tank. After installing the new ATC and spindle, it was clear that the added weight was too heavy for the standard Z-axis hardware. So we installed the Carbide 3D Z Plus upgrade. In the last video, we replaced the standard Shapoko PCB with a Duet 3. In order to connect and control all this additional hardware, we need to upgrade our electrical enclosure again. So this is our new electrical enclosure. On the face of the electrical panel, we have a power disconnect switch. This disconnect switch that can flip on and off the power supply with one turn is a great feature to have for safety. Inside the electrical panel, we have our power distribution system that includes a 5 amp breaker, a 240 volts AC to 24 volts DC transformer, and terminal blocks. We also upgraded the CNC power supply from 120 volts AC to 240 volts AC. This is to provide additional power for the spindle and all the additional hardware. Next to that, we have a pneumatic components. This includes our pneumatic regulator that limits the pressure of air, 
and two pneumatic solenoids, which are hardware that can be used to open and close pneumatic valves. Below that is a Duet 3, which is the more powerful and capable control board that we installed in the last video. Next to the Duet 3 are two relays. These relays take the signals from the variable frequency drive and converts them into input signals for the Duet 3. These input signals will inform the CNC when the spindle has reached the desired spindle speed and when the spindle has come to a complete stop. Next to the relay is a PWM converter. This board takes the digital signals coming from the Duet 3 and converts them to an analog signal for the variable frequency drive. Lastly, we updated the LCD screen, the bit setter, and the touch probes, and we also added RBG lighting, all controlled by the Duet 3. After all these hardware installations, we moved on to the software. We spent a few weeks rewriting all the G codes to add support for multiple tool change, the new spindle, the pneumatic hardware, and all the additional accessories. Breaking down everything that we did will take far too long, but we will be giving away all the code and diagrams for free on GitHub. More on that later in the video. But do us a favor and like this video, and if you want to support us, please consider subscribing down below. Moving on, let's go ahead and jump onto Fusion 360 so we can begin modeling our test file. Now that we finish installing the hardware, we're going to go ahead and design a print for the CNC so we can test out the tool exchanger, make sure everything's looking good. So let's make something fun and I'm going to make the CNC play a game of tic-tac-toe. This will highlight changing over to multiple tools. If you look at our setup, we're going to separate each operation as a move. The CNC will begin by making the tick tack board followed by an X then an O meanwhile it's going to be flipping tools and after it finishes the game it will make a cross and then we're good so that's the plan let's go ahead and export the G code and I'm going to select for pros processor rip wrap firmware name this program tick tack toe Go ahead and save this on my desktop. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and open up the G code that we just made. Here we are. All right, taking a look at the G code. It's being made from the Autodesk default riprap firmware. Here's all the G code that's being produced. And let's go ahead and upload this to our CNC. So type in the IP address of our CNC. We have access to the CNC web controls. Now we're going to go ahead and upload our code. Tick tack NC and click upload. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 All right, you guys. So, that was a failure. We had a few errors when we attempted to run the G code. So, we had to identify what's wrong. Best way to do it is to actually open up the G code and see what could be causing the issue. So we were having two key issues during the test. First, the spindle wasn't working. Second, we were getting an error when the machine was trying to move through the different positions. So we have an idea what to look for. There's something wrong with the spindle command and there's something wrong with the motion data. So opening the G code file, let's look for those key sections. So after the machine starts up, we're going to do our tool change, T3. And then right here is when the spindle is supposed to turn on, M3. And as you can see, the format is off. The spindle speed is being set before the M3 command. And the Duet 3 
doesn't like that. The Duet 3 is expecting the M3 to command to go before the spin of speed. So there's the error right there. Second, the motion commands. Any motion with X, Z, or Y should also have a G command in front of it, such as this line. So in this line is a G0 plus the X and a Y command. And this line is G1 plus a Z command. Great. But these other lines do not have a G command. And there's an error right there too. On some CNC, you don't need to specify a G command on each line. But what I found for Duet 3, you should be specifying a G command on each line. So those are the two key errors that the post processor, the default post processor is producing. So let's go ahead and take a look at the post processor. So here is the default post processor for the rip wrap software. As you can see, basically what this is doing, it's taking the instructions from Fusion 360 and converting it into G code for the machine. Somewhere in here, in this 700 lines of code, there are errors that's preventing us from working correctly. And now I have the fun time of diagnosing it. So let's begin. All right, I think I have an idea what's going on. So, so let's go ahead and first fix the M3 command. So we're gonna go in the post processor and search for the M format command. This should control the M3 command. All right. So this block outputs the spindle speed during its tool change. Okay, as you can see the right block right here, it's setting the spindle speed before the M code. What we want to do is reverse that. And now when I export, it's going to export the M code first, followed by the spindle speed. Great, we're already done. Next, we also want to fix our G code. So we're looking for the G format. Here. So this controls the G code format for G1 and G0. And what I'm going to want to do is force this to be exported on each time it's called upon. So those are two key things that we want to do fix. But since I'm already at it, I'm going to add a lot of other features such as ensuring that the spindle is fully on before it machines the part and it's fully off before it does a tool change. All right, guys, after a day, I have finished making our custom post processor. Not only did we fix the formatting errors, we've also added a lot of safety features. Let's go ahead and just look at the G code that we can produce now. On the left hand side is the G code produced by the standard rip wrap post processor. On the right hand side is the G code produced by our post processor. So as you can see, after the tool change, you'll have the reversed M3 and the spindle speed on the left hand side. On our post processor, the M3 comes before the spindle speed which is correct. And also on our side, we have a new command after the M3, which tells the machine to wait until a spindle is fully on. And this is done by a sensor on the variable speed controller. Here's the actual motion commands for our CNC. As you can see, each motion command is given a G command compared to the old post processor, which does not. We also added the stop spindle command at the end of the g-code great as you can see the g-code looks much better now let's go ahead and send this to our cnc and machine out our new piece
Being able to send a job through the CNC and no longer needing to tend to the separate operations will be a great advantage moving forward. And the improved noise levels, the improved cutting performance, and the faster machining times are all great bonuses. But the system is not perfect yet. There are two major flaws in the current setup, which we will solve in the next video. I want to give a special thanks to everyone who has subscribed to our channel. We have now passed 100 subscribers. Thank you. Because of this, we are going to give away a Carbi 3D Bitrunner. All you need to do is like, subscribe, and comment down below with the keyword Carbite Bitrunner. Follow us on all social media platforms for updates and announcements. Join our Discord for fun conversations and to get involved with our upcoming projects. We will be releasing everything from our CAD models to our system files and our custom host processor for free on GitHub. The links will be down below. Lastly, consider becoming a Patreon. Your support will be greatly appreciated. Patreon supporters will also have access to our private Discord channel where we will help you with your Shaypoko questions. That's it for the video. See you next time.